Today we are going to talk about uh, pods, the another component of uh, worker node. Well, uh, this is the series of AKS, which is the managed service, and we do not have the access of uh, master nodes. But in real world, where we do not use the managed services, where we build our own cluster the hard way, uh, we can also spin the pod on master node. There is a way by which we need to, uh, you know, untaint the master pod, and we can, uh, sorry, master node, and we can even run our pods to the master node, just like the worker node. Anyways, this video is all about pods, so let's get into it. So, uh, what is pod? The very basic thing is what is pod. So in this video, we'll try to understand what is pod, how it is different from container, how the communication happens, the networking stuff, and things like that. It's all about pod. So if we need to describe what is pod, it is it is the basic scheduling unit or it's atomic unit of uh, scheduling, just like in virtualization, it's VM. In containerization, it's container. Similarly, in Kubernetes, it is pod. So we can say it's uh, atomic unit of scheduling. Okay. Cool. Now, pod is something that we deploy with the help of kubectl or Kubernetes will help us, the API server. We need to write some command on the cube, on, on the uh, CLI with the help of kubectl that will talk to the API server and your pod will be deployed. So how exactly it's done? Well, for that, we create a manifest file. Manifest file is, uh, or pod manifest file specifically is used to deploy pods okay this manifest file could be of yaml or json okay mostly it's yaml that people use but you can also use uh, json okay cool that's how we deploy the pod now we have already seen in the previous video there are more than one con container inside the pod, which is uh, very rare. We usually have one container inside a pod, but you can also have the multiple container inside the pod. So we have to make a point here. Multiple containers are possible inside the pod, okay? All right. Generally, it's one to one relation, but in some situations, we deploy more than one computer, which is uh, more than one container, which is more like a helper container, and we deploy this inside the same pod. These two containers can talk to each other directly by uh, referencing localhost because they share the same network space. Uh, they can also easily share the storage name space as well. Uh, However, multi-container is rare. So if I have to represent this thing, uh, it would look like this. There is this pod. This is a pod. And we have one container. And there is another container. This is C2. Ah, not a pre-workout. C1. Oh, that's a C4, I think. Uh, Let's get back to the topic. These are two containers inside the same pod. Okay. And these two containers can talk to each other by referencing localhost. Because where is the IP address? IP address is on the pod. Here would be the IP address on the pod, not on the container. A.b.c.d. Okay. That's how it look like. looks like. So multi-container is uh, possible. Now, let's talk about 
communication okay let's suppose there is this is one pod and there is one more pod right here okay and we have only one container I'm sorry I always forgets about this we have only one container inside this pod and of course there is an IP address for this pod which is uh, x dot y dot z dot v okay this is the IP address of pod 1 and this is the IP address of pod 2 okay now this wants to talk to this all right it should be like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. communication between the parts this communication we are talking about okay this communication this is what is called inter pod communication okay so how this has happened well by default inside the kubernetes cluster every pod can talk to each other without even uh, modifying any port or exposing any anything for the services so this is by default inside the cluster any pod can talk to any other pod okay doesn't matter if it is on a different node all right now the question comes how come these will talk to each other that means that means uh, intra pod communication okay this is gonna be intra pod communication so this will happen with the help of port numbers for example this is open for 8080 and this one is open for uh, 3030 okay and now if we need to talk to this need to talk to this one it will go through the port localhost 3030 it will go here and it can talk to this one similarly if we want to talk to these content from outside so it would be like if you want to talk to this container c1 it would be a b a dot b dot c dot d colon adad this will go to the first container this will go to the first container all right similarly if we do same thing but with a different pro port number this then this will talk to I'm sorry this will talk to C2 okay similarly this port this pod would be open on some kind of port let's say 5656 and we need to talk to this port we're gonna use this IP address of pod 2 along with this port that's how we'll talk to this port and that's how the intercommunication happens so that's how the communication happens inside the port or interpod or intrapod communication okay now uh, we need to talk about uh, the life cycle of a pod so there would be something like I talked about uh, this manifest file right here you can see so what exactly happens let's try to build a structure so that it will help us let's suppose there is a manifest file kind pod this manifest file is going to deploy come on is going to deploy to the API server it's going to deploy an API server will receive the command the information that API server needs to run a pod okay so we're talking about the life cycle right now so that's how the manifest file is written 
for the kind pod, it's get deployed, like kubectl create pod, or kubectl run hyphen f the path of the file, things like that. We will talk about kubectl in the uh, later videos, but for now, just for the understanding, we're just talking about all the components, and this video is all about pod, so a little bit about the lifecycle. So this got submitted to the API server on the master node. Okay, now this got scheduled. Don't go there. Okay, now, no, don't go there either. All right, uh, okay. Now this gets scheduled. If you remember, we talked about the component. There was one of the component in the master node, if you remember, scheduler. So it gets scheduled on the worker node. Okay. Once this scheduled, it goes, the state of the uh, pod goes don't do that again as a pending there is a pending state okay. why it's pending state because it gets scheduled it's been deployed now during the during the pending state what it is doing it is downloading container images and it's starting the uh, container or running the container until all containers are up and running it will be on the uh, pending state working on manifest file like downloading images and running containers that's why it's pending okay cool now once all container provision it comes to the running state it comes to the running state running state pod okay now once the main purpose is achieved it goes to from running state to succeeded okay now between this these states like pending uh running in the succeeded there is one more state which is known as as failed state okay it may possible your pod gets failed and you never get back your pod once it is failed once it is killed it's gone you cannot get it back but a new pod will create instantaneously with different ID or IP, but the same configuration. Okay, so this is this is the uh, life cycle of a pod. Okay, and if I need to show you the manifest file, how it actually looks like, it would be something like that. Let me give you a little. Uh, idea if this is so it would be like api version kind metadata then we have a name it's a yaml okay then we have a role okay then we have spec oh it's not role it's labels okay it's better if I just show you rather writing here it's a YAML file right so what can we do let me let me grab the URL for you and I'll show you the YAML file so if you go to the Kubernetes uh, search for the manifest file for pod 
it, it looks like something like that. This is the YAML format, which talk about the API version, kind, metadata, where we are talking about giving the name or the labels to the to the pod here is the specification of the containers because inside the pod there is a container running here is the ports that we want to expose a container to okay so that's how it looks like and that's what the pod is okay so this is a little about kubernetes overview and things like that in next video we'll talk about uh, aks overview well thank you for watching you have a good day bye bye